Welcome to the Listen Inside podcast from Readers in the Know. My name's Simon Demon, the founder of ReadersInTheKnow.com, where the smartest readers from around the world stay in the know about the best upcoming deals on the books they most want. In each episode of this daily podcast, I'll be giving you a sneak preview of one of the great books on our website. Today, we're going to look at Mercy Carver, Dark Shadows, by Jana Petkin. When unimaginable calamities strike, Mercy Carver, a poor London woman, wonders what she has done to deserve such immeasurable suffering. It is only when she faces imminent death in the snow and ice-encrusted Virginia wilderness that she finally understands the power of destiny. Mercy is passionate. She loves and hates in equal measure. Can love and hatred give her the strength she needs now to reach a northern state and free a runaway slave wanted for murders she committed? America and her people are strangled in an uncompromising political stalemate. Southern states have seceded from the Union, and a civil war is imminent. Mercy Carver. Her journey is just beginning. Mercy, dazed, bewildered and terrified, stood in a bedraggled line with the other girls. She was afraid to move a muscle, even though her aching limbs demanded that she do so in order to free herself of painful cramps. She was terrified of being noticed, or of allowing a sound to leave her mouth. Cold air was not responsible for making her teeth chatter. No, they clicked together in a song of fear. She was exhausted, sick, and trying her utmost to stand on unsteady feet. Her wrists and ankles were raw and covered in dried blood in places because of her determined efforts to free herself from the ropes that had bound her. Her face was stinging, swollen, and bruised as though she had been punched. Her mouth was still half open due to the painful hours she had spent gagged, and her lips were swollen to twice their normal size with several doses of chloroform. Horrific images floated through her mind, but she was not having a nightmare. She was not dreaming this. This was a conscious experience that she could neither comprehend nor associate anything with. The chloroform was still lingering in her system, but she attempted to focus her thoughts on exactly what had happened to her. She had offered to help a man who was worried about his wife. The man in question was now standing alongside another man right here in this stable. She couldn't believe stupidity and trust had led her to this. It was an unimaginable horror. Getting tied up was not an experience she had any recollection of at all. She had woken up on the floor with back-breaking pain. Only then had she discovered her tethered body. She remembered sporadic drinks of water because of the painful procedure involved. The smelly rag that gagged her mouth had been pulled off her face and then replaced, stinging her skin. The drops of liquid poured on it had sent her into an abyss of darkness without dreams each time. Her tongue was numb, Her mouth was so dry that it was difficult to swallow her saliva. She had no clue as to her whereabouts. Was she far from home, or was home close by? No, she determined. Home was not nearby. London was not that big, and they had been on the road for a long time. She had to conclude, therefore, that they were nowhere near the city or its suburbs. Her hungry belly was rumbling, yet the thought of putting food into her mouth made her want to retch again. Her new gown, drenched in pee and dried vomit, was a degrading and shameful sight. The dress was torn on the left side, from her underarm right down to her waist. She was desperate to take it off and wash. Pride and vanity had been a fleeting experience for her. That day in the dressmaker's shop, and her experience in a beautiful tea room in front of St. Paul's, had been the first time she'd ever thought of herself as more than a girl from a poor London borough. Her own vanity had brought her to this. This was the end of innocence and sweet dreams. How could she ever feel pure after what she'd seen and felt? She felt like an animal, no better than that. She felt like one of those black slaves she'd heard about. She was being treated like livestock at market. What would her family be thinking right now? It was the first time the thought had occurred to her. Would they be out looking for her? She just knew they would be but she also assumed they would look no farther than the dressmaker's and Mrs. McCallum's house, certainly no farther than the confines of the borough of Southwark. It wouldn't enter their minds to cross the river to look for her, for that had been forbidden to her, and she had always been obedient. 
Girls were sobbing now. She looked to her left and then to her right. One girl was crying so loudly that Mercy thought she might get shot for it. Just then, a girl keeled over and hit the ground with a thud. Mercy thought she might fall too. She wished she could hold on to something or someone. She would not cry again if she could help it. She thought about Grandpa Carver. He would belt her if he were here to see her crying like a sissy. If you'd like to find out more about this book or its author, please visit readersinthenow.com slash podcast, where you'll find links to all the information you could possibly need, including pricing in your local currency, and the link to the book's product page at your local Amazon store. If you create a free account with us, you could even add this book to your watch list, so you'll be notified if and when it's next on promotion. You may even be able to receive the Kindle edition of this book for free, simply by telling your friends about us. So why not sign up now at readersinthenow.com and never miss another great deal on the books you most want. Readers in the Know, because the best opportunities are planned. <laughs>